Hi everyone, welcome back to the TechMarket channel. Today we're going to continue the creation of our front end. We are focusing on the menu component and this front end uses Blazor and also uses HTML, of course. Today we're going to continue and focus on the style, on the CSS of our solution. So let's jump into it. For the style, we are going to rely on Bootstrap. Bootstrap comes by default in the Blazor WASM template. So let's take a look here in the index HTML just to make sure that we have the bootstrap over here. So the bootstrap.min.css comes by default with the template and we are going to explore the classes and the style possibilities of the bootstrap for our menu component. So let's go back to the menu and here we're going to add some classes to the product card tag. So let's go here, class equal card. So this product card is going to use the class named card. It's also going to be a text white because the text inside, I mean, the text is going to be on top of the image. So in order to be on top of the image, let's make it white. Also in terms of the background, let's establish a BG dark background. Okay. Other than this, inside of the product info, let's define that this product info area is going to be an overlay. Let's use card emg overlay. That's the class that we use to make this uh, content be on top of the image. So that's fine. To give a little bit of emphasis to the title, let's use h3. So let's use heading 3 for the product name. Let's also define the image class. So let's add card emg because then we define that this image is the one that is the image of that card. This way it's going to interact with all of the other styles, the card, the card image overlay and so on. So to run this time let's do a little bit different. We want to make sure that when we make changes to the CSS or to HTML we want to make sure that the project is going to reload automatically. So we don't need to stop and start and stop and start again. Let's use .NET watch run. It's going to start a session for us. And every time we make a change in the Razor files, this is going to reload automatically. We don't need to go back and restart the system. So now let's open a new browser session, localhost 5001. So let's open this. What is missing now is the format for the button. So let's go back here and set some formatting for the button. So let's add a class, btn, and btn primary. That's one of the options on Bootstrap to make a primary button. After we save, it's going to recompile this menu.razor. So let's take a look how it is now. Great, so this is much better. Now, let's also make this button something that can appear on the bottom of the card. To do this, we can do the following. Let's add some styles in this case. So let's set position as absolute and basically the bottom is gonna be zero pixels, the right is going to be zero pixels as well, and margin is going to be 10 pixels. Let's see how it goes. Great, so now it is positioned in the bottom right of the card. This card is actually getting too big, right? So let's make it like at least two cards per page. Let's set a style over here in the product card. And this style is going to be a maximum width of 300 pixels. Let's see how it reflects over here. Great. Okay. We don't need actually borders on them, right? So we can set their borders as zero. Here we are defining very basic CSS, right? But as this project starts to get more and more complex and we have more and more components, it's important to keep some isolation in regards to the styles that are defined for a certain components and the styles that are defined to other components. It, depending on how you define this style or this class, you may end up affecting 
the other component. So how can we make these styles more specific to a certain component? When we are talking about a real project, right, a real website that is a big one that contains many components, different components can be developed by different development teams. You don't want to actually have any impact on the components that they are developing. So how do you do that, right? In Blazor, we don't have this capability by default. We do have that in Angular, for example, but for Blazor, we have a component created by the community in order to address this point. So the name of this component is Blazor Styled. So let's take a look and install this component in our solution. .NET add package and let's type Blazor Styled. By doing this, this is going to install in our solution. Great, that's fine. So now we need to add this when the Blazor is started. We're going to do this in the program.cs. So here we come here and using Blazor Styled and we're going to add this new service. So builder.addServices.addBlazor Styled. By doing this, we have now Blazor Styled available in our solution. To use it in our Razor file, let's go here to the imports.razor and add a using of Blazor Styled. This makes this component, this service, available for our menu.razor. Okay, so now let's open the menu.razor file. In the menu.razor file, all I need to do is to create a tag called styled. By creating this tag called styled, I can define inside of this tag everything related to the styles of this component. Let's define product card first. And inside of our product card, let's move the style from here to the definition over here. Let's do the same thing for the button. The button is inside of product info. So I'm going to put like this product info button. And this product info button has these settings over here. Now I'm going to add a new class that is going to be applied in the overlay. And this class has a gradient. A transparent gradient that is going to allow the white letters from the from the content right the description and the title to be a little bit more visible so uh, what I'm gonna do this is going to be applied to product hyphen info and I have this style already created this is a background and this background here is defining uh, we have three lines here because we we know that in order to make sure that we are going to have this support in all of the browsers like uh, chrome internet explorer and also firefox we need to make sure that we create these polyfills and what is a polyfill so the default implementation is the linear hyphen gradient but we also need to bring like webkit and moss implementation so we make sure that the older browsers are also going to behave as expected. I'm going to save this and let's see if it applies appropriately to our card. All right, and this is definitely applied. So here you can see that the the letters now they are much more visible because you have this overlay on top of the image and this is kind of a transparent overlay. This allows the white fonts to be more evident. So that's the idea and basically by using the style, the blazer style, we are able to define this specific style to this specific menu.razor file. And we see in a single file, which is the menu.razor, everything. We see style, we see the HTML, and we see the C-sharp code. All right, so we reached the end of our video. In the next video, we are going to talk about the API that is going to serve the data for our client side. If you want me to design another type of use case, please add on the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and also click on the notification button to receive notifications when we publish new videos. Thanks a lot for joining again. I see you soon on the next video. Thank you.